Hello, and welcome to our third video on know-how workshops. Today we're going to be looking at learner personas. Learner personas help us keep our learners front and center during the design process and let us create products that are both pragmatic and lean. To define learner personas, you need the following. A grasp of what we call the learner ecosystem. This refers to all of the personas you're dealing with and how they interact with each other. Story shares, where we record real discussions or interactions we've had with learners. And an empathy map that covers the things learners have been saying and doing and thoughts and feelings that might sit behind these. Let's start by taking a look at the learner ecosystem. We start by defining our core persona in the middle like this. Then we explore who else might be influenced or affected by any potential solutions we design. No learner is an island, so we spend the time working both up and down the chain to explore other potential learner groups. Once you've got your learner ecosystem defined, it's time to whip up some story shares. Story shares are a quick way to create personas based on real people when we don't have the luxury of interviewing them. We ask our workshop participants to write a short description of a real interaction they've had with one of the people they listed in the learner ecosystem. Then we ask, why is this story valuable? What does it specifically illustrate about our learners? And now finally, we can move on to the empathy map. Empathy mapping explores the types of things learners are saying and doing in relation to the problem statement. From that, we try to empathize with them by imagining what they might be thinking or feeling when they say or do these things. Empathy mapping helps us generate needs and insights that are deeper than just, we need our learners to be better at doing X. Instead, we try to uncover why they're not doing something well. Maybe they're reluctant to engage with X, not because they lack knowledge of the process, but because they need other auxiliary skills to complete a task. Now that we know who we're designing for, we can move on to prototyping potential solutions, which we'll look into in the next video.